afternoon welcome to jewelry makers calendar make along and if you haven't met me before i'm debbie kershaw but if you just watch the show hello again we're going to well we it's actually just me i'm sorry l's gone uh, it's me and the boys in the gallery they're here so it's not just me we're going to be showing you how to make this i'm going to show it bracelet so if you have been watching the show just before this you will have seen us reference this and it's like um a capriccio bracelet which is sort of like a netted five bead netted bracelet so one of the components on here is from the calendar and that is the point of these make-alongs so that we can give you inspiration and ideas of what you might like to do with your pieces from our jewelry maker advent calendar now i've got this calendar it's absolutely epic so without any further ado should we have a look at door number 14. i like this bit this is my favorite bit I need to get out more really, don't I? So, today is day 14. Obviously, tomorrow's gonna be a very good day because it's my birthday. And I haven't opened my door number 15, so I'll be surprised with you when you open yours. So obviously I know what's in here because I've been working with it. So useful. When you um, get this, it's obviously in a plastic bag, I've taken it out so that we can be a bit quicker opening it. So you get one of the little anti-tarnish sheets, so you know it's going to be good. It's actually, if I just pop it down on my mat amongst all my other things, it's a gorgeous three anchor point sterling silver clasp and it's got these little parve set. Isn't it pretty? So, so pretty. So if I show you, um, where it is on my bracelet um, so I thought you know what we've got this lovely clasp so what we need to do is make a bracelet that needs to use those three anchor points so I'm just going to pop this back in there so everything a few of the components that I've used and if you watched my um, demo the other day but we have told jm before what we've sort of used for our demo so there will be some similar components on the web so if you go on to jewelrymaker.com throughout the hour and you'll see sort of different products reference that you could use to make what i'm going to be showing you so if i show you on the overhead my bracelet what makes this really really special is that you have these three anchor points so if you have made in whatever technique that you like to do a netted bracelet or a wide bracelet that you'd rather have secured in more than one place then this is really perfect for this so that's why I decided to do this demo now also you've got an extender chain on here as well and this is great because you've got your little um, sort of drop on the end there you can then make this bracelet larger or smaller without actually having to make a really large piece of netting so this is basically five bead netting now I have made it depends on the size beads that you use and what kind of bead you use as to what look you're going to get so I'm going to show you some of the other <coughs> excuse me bracelets that I've made with this netting so just let me move these out of the way so all of these have been made using exactly the same technique that I'm going to show you but just using different beads because if I turn it over you'll see that it is essentially five bead netting and the beads that you're seeing on the top have just been added after you've completed the netting and I will be going through all of the stages of how you can do this <coughs> excuse me the one here I've left a lot of the netting just as netting and then I've sewn in some of our lovely lucite flowers and if you did open the calendar a couple of days ago we did have some lucite flowers in the calendar so if you have got the calendar you can use the lucite flowers that are in the calendar so once you know how to do this technique you'll be able to do lot it do, do it lots of of different ways add lots of different clasps and lots of different ways of doing it on this one i did i used one of our lovely tassel caps and so when this does up you actually have this 
tassel hanging from it which I think is really really pretty as a feature but you know you might not be a lover of anything too blingy so you can sort of do it your way so I'm going to move these out of the way clear the decks a little bit and then I'm going to just talk you through what you're going to need if you want to to make something like this now I am here and I have been here a very long time so if you are watching I'd love you to send me a message even if you just go hi Debs it's lovely to know that you're there and that you're watching. If you're watching on playback, then obviously I can't see your message, but hello anyway. Okay, so let's talk about what we might need for our bracelet. And it's not many things at all, really. And it's quite a repetitive technique, so it's really quite relaxing. So what you're going to need to make this um, bracelet is some fire line or wildfire, the beading thread of your choice. Um, I use six pounds, but eight pounds will work as well. A size 10 or 12 beading needle. Now, on the bracelet that I did for the calendar, I did use some size 15 seed beads. So when you come to adding the embellishment, you might want to go down to a size 12, but you can actually get away with a size 10 uh, because we're not doing multiple passes through. You'll also need um, a stopper bead and some embellishment beads. So the ones that I used for the calendar were little four millimeter faux pearls, but obviously I've shown you some different ideas of things that you can use with the bracelets that I just showed you. So you can use bicones, you can use rondelles, you can use crystal, you can use gemstones, you can use real pearls, faux pearls, completely up to you. As long as they fit into your netting gap, then you'll be absolutely fine. Now you can change the sizes of the seed beads but the one that I'm doing today uses two colors of your 11 o seed beads <clears throat> excuse me my seed bead of choice is Miyuki because I think they just fit together beautifully and you'll also need some size 15 o seed beads now I've used really random colors here really bold colors just so that you can see what I'm doing when you're looking to learn. I'm also going to start off using larger seed beads so that you can really see what I'm doing. But the end result is made with 11 O's, which I will switch to at the end. So I'm just going to move these out of the way and then we can get started. Now, if I get time, I'm also going to try and cover things that we often don't have time in our demos usually to cover, like adding in thread and tying in your ends. And we always tend to talk about doing this, like we just expect everybody to know. But these are things that I really needed to know when I was starting out. So hopefully we'll get time for me to show you how to add thread, because most projects that use a lot of thread do need you to add in your thread. Because if you're starting off working with reams and reams of thread, there's far more likelihood that you're going to get all tangled and get yourself in a pickle so it's far better to start off with a manageable length of thread so it's no use me saying start with a meter start with two meters start with a manageable length of thread that you're comfortable with that you're not going to get tangled up if you're a seasoned seed beater then you're probably better at this but I know when I started I couldn't cope with big huge large amounts of thread without actually getting manicas in a twist which is something we don't want so <clears throat> For the purposes of demonstration, I'm actually going to go up a side of a size of seed bead. So these seed beads are actually um, size eights, just so that you're going to be able to see what um, techniques I'm using. Whereas eleven O's are quite hard for you to see. So we're going to need two colours. The reason we're going to need two colours is because it makes your life easier. It can be done with one colour, certainly. But when you come to cross over, there's less thought that needs to go into it if you use a different colour. And that will um, become apparent in a moment when I show you. So you want to thread a manageable size of your fire line onto your beading needle and I'm going to add a stopper bead. Now this stopper bead can be any bead that isn't in your project and it doesn't matter because it's going to come off at the end but it just stops your beads falling off in the first instance so it's not really important and a stopper bead you just pop it on and bring it down 
to the end of your thread and you want to leave about enough thread for you to sew in at the end. Now for purposes of demonstration and so this doesn't get in my way, I'm actually going to take my stopper bead right down and the way we secure this is we just take our needle back up the bead like that. Now I have cut my finger so I might be a little bit cat candid because that's the thumb that I'm using but we'll get there. Okay so I'm just going to pull that through and then what happens is you've got a stopper bead that you can actually move up and down and then just take off at the end. So we're going to take out our size and you'll be using 11 O's for yours but I've just got some larger ones so you can see what I'm doing in two colours. One's going to be your netting bead and one's going to be your crossover bead which you'll see in a moment so I'm probably going to have to, to add that. So for the size of bracelet that I made we're going to start off with one crossover bead so let's make the dark colour our crossover bead and two netting beads so our netting beads will be gold. So one crossover bead and two netting beads and we're going to do that eight times so that's one crossover bead, two netting beads, two, crossover bead, two netting beads, three, crossover bead, two netting, four, just drop that down, five, six, seven, and finishing with the last one, eight. And then I'm gonna drop these down to my stop bead and we'll have a look at what we have. So here's what we have. So you want to make sure that you've got the right number of beads when you start out so that you know that you're starting correctly. So if we count them, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight sets of those crossover and netting beads. And then what we want to do is go up the fourth crossover bead in the row. So one, two, three, four, and you're going to sew up through that crossover bead. I like to hold my fingers on it so that I can get my needle through. Now it does make a difference which way you go through your beads. When I very first started seed beading, I used to sometimes go down the bead instead of up the bead and didn't realize what difference that made and I couldn't work out what I'd done wrong. So you're going up towards your stopper bead in this case. And quite often I would hold my uh, work, but I'm just gonna try and leave it down on the mat as much as I can so that you can see what I'm doing. So then I'm just going to pop my needle through and give it a pull. So what that will do is create that little loop on the bottom. And this will be the first little part of our netting. Now with our 11 O's, the netting works out a lot smaller, but with this, um, it's just a bit larger because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're going to add our five bead netting, which is two netting beads, a crossover bead, and two netting beads. So every time I say that we're going to be adding our netting, it's that combination. So two netting, one two netting. Now I'm going to miss the next one in the row and go up the next row. Now this is about as complicated as it gets because it becomes very repetitive after these first couple of rows. <laughs> so we're going to take the needle up here and give it a pull. So I find that holding my fingers on it is a good way of sort of keeping everybody where they should be so that now I've got like my first two units on and then again I'm going to do my five bead netting so two one and two miss the next one and go through the very last bead next to your crossover bead so popping my needle up and through 
popping my hands on my work, I will get my hands out of the way and give that a pull. So that's your first row there. And you can see that each row, you've got five beads um, in the little loops and that's five bead netting. Now you can work back down, but I like to work away from me. So I'm gonna turn my work here. Now it's always five bead netting, apart from when you do your turns and then we add extra beads, we add eight beads. So we're going to add a five bead netting, one, two, crossover bead and two and then we're going to add one more crossover bead and two netting beads so this is what we have on our turn we have our five bead netting a crossover bead and two netting beads so when we turn our work and begin a new row we always are going to start with those eight beads and then you want to go through the first <coughs> excuse me a sticking out bead in the row. Now, for the first couple of rows, you might think, oh, I don't know what you mean because it looks all sort of bunched up together. But if you just open these up, you'll see that it's that crossover bead there. Now, this is where using two colors of beads is really, really helpful because if these were all gold, it would be quite difficult to see exactly which one we needed to go through, especially as you get along a bit and you could easily make mistakes. So having that different color as your crossover bead really helps, especially if you are pretty new to seed beading. So I'm going to go up through this first bead in the row. Oop, let me try that again. I've caught it on the... So if it can get caught on anything, it will. <laughs> so let's try that again. We're going up through the first sticking out bead. Now I'm gonna just have to hold this and then I'll put it down to show you. And you'll start building these netting, little netting units as you go along. So we're gonna continue with a five bead netting. So we've got two of our netting beads, a crossover bead and two of our netting beads and we're going to go not through the next one but through the next sticking out bead. So you're essentially missing one going through one and we're going to just pop your needle up through that bead. So this is what I have. Give it a pull so you're always going in the same direction. Now as far as this might be a good moment to talk about tension, you don't want to have thread showing as sort of gaps. You want to sort of make sure that you're adding some tension to your work so all of your beads sit nicely together. Now everybody works with different tension. I know when you're knitting and crocheting people have different tension. If you pull that too hard then your beads will sort of start to rack out and sort of sponge together because you're pulling them too tight. Alternatively if you're not pulling them tight enough you'll see your thread a lot between. So it's kind of a fine line of having that tension so that your netting is neat but not pulling it too tight so that your netting actually starts to to curl up so we're going to do five beads again one two three four and five and we're going the next sticking out bead and give it a pull so we've gone to the top there so now we need to turn our work again or come back down the other side so we're going to add the eight beads because it's on a turn so we do our usual five bead netting one two three four five and then we're going to add three more one crossover now this might be a good time to tell you why we're going to do that on the corners of this if you add the extra beads then you actually get if I show you on the on the finished piece this sort of ripply effect rather than a straight effect and that's really good for adding your clasp because it means you can nestle your little posts in between your beadwork um, on this particular one I've actually added some beads at the top to make it straight at the top but you don't have to do that you can actually have a frilly edge 
like that, which is kind of what I'm doing now. So we're adding on those extra three beads as we turn so that we kind of get a nice loopy effect on the end. So I've got my eight beads and I'm going to go up through the next sticking out bead, which is that one there. And I just need to pick it up and give it a pull. So only on the turns do we use our eight beads and we're gonna go back to our five bead netting. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going next sticking out bead, which is this one here. And I'm going to sew up that one. And it's, I find it a lot easier to just hold on to your work once you've got past the first couple of rows and do it that way because then you've sort of got control of it. So again, I'm going to add five beads, speed up a little bit. And I'm going into the last sticking out bead, which is here. So popping it through that one and give it a pull. And as you can see, we're back to the end again. So I'm going to flip my work. But as I said before, you can um, work back down again if you prefer to do that. And because we've turned it, we're doing um, the extra beads. So we're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're going to go through the next sticking out bead. So if I hold it, I'm going through this one. And if you're having a trouble seeing which bead to go, then just pull out your unit and you're going to see that crossover bead right there on the corner that's sticking out. And give it a pull. So we're going back to our five bead netting because we're just continuing up. So next sticking out bead pop it through and give it a pull and again one two three four five and we're going into the last sticking out bead now I'll do one more row with you before we move on so I'm going up and through give it a pull and as you can see it grows quite quickly it's one of those um, projects that you can do kind of sitting in front of the television or on your lap or you know once you get into the rhythm it's really quite mindful and relaxing so I'm going to drop that down again and we'll do one more row with the bigger beads okay so we're going to do because we've turned and we're on a corner we're going to add those extra beads so we're doing two netting one crossover two netting one crossover and two netting so we've got our eight beads and we're going through the first sticking out bead. So if you get in a pickle and think, oh, I'm not sure where I am, just have a look where your thread's exiting. So my thread is actually exiting this one. So I know that this is the next one in the row because once you get going, it's kind of a bit higgledy piggledy. So if you're not sure, just take a minute, work out where your thread's coming out and where you need to go as it starts to sort of move and make these really pretty units with these lovely kind of swirly bits. So this is where your clasp is going to sit when we eventually start to add that. So now we're just on the main part. So it's just basic five bead netting again. As we work our way up, we're looking for the sticking out bead on the next unit. So if you're not sure, just push that out with your finger and you can see it. You can see it there and then give it a pull and then we've just got one more to go so I'm just going to need a couple more beads before we go on to the next part so we'll just add some beads in there this is actually really um, relaxing compared to the last one I did because the last one I did I was using hammers and being noisy and this is my yeah see I'm with the chill team we're the, the chillax team <laughs> don't go to sleep in there no sleeping in the gallery. And then you can if you want, I'll tell you when it's over. <laughs> so there, we've made another row so that we can see that our netting is building really nicely. And then obviously I would turn that 
around again and I'm at the beginning of another row and I've got my eight beads. So now that you've kind of got the idea of how to do the netting, I'm going to move on to how to embellish the netting. So what you need to do is continue with this netting and you'll be using 11 O's. I mean, you could use this size, but you just need a bigger bead for your embellishments. You need to work out how long you want your bracelet to be. So if we have a look at this one that I made for the calendar, you need to bear in mind your clasp. So if you're using the calendar clasp, you can get away with making your netting a little bit shorter because you've got the versatility of having this here, which will enable you to essentially make that bracelet larger if you need to. If you are using a different clasp or a toggle clasp, then bear in mind that the length of your bracelet will need to include your clasp. So if you're having a look at say this one, that's obviously going to add quite a bit to the length of my bracelet because it's a big clasp. But if you're using the one from the calendar, which I would recommend because it's absolutely perfect for a design like this, then all you really need to take into consideration is the length of your bracelet plus two of these little clasps. And it's always better if you've got a clasp like this to be using, um, doing it kind of a little bit less because you can always add on. I mean, you can take away the seed beading, but um, with this, you have got the um, security of the extender chain. So if it is a little bit too short, people can wear it a little bit longer. And it's quite nice to embellish that. I added a little pearl on the end there. So there is some fire line there on your screens, which is a great thread to use for beading. And that's one of the main questions that I get asked is what bead, what beading thread do you use, especially for beginners, because we, we call a lot of things beading thread, don't we? We, we call um, tiger tail beading thread, but you wouldn't use that for this. So it is the fire line or the wildfire thread that we're using <coughs> for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these size sixes out of the way. I'm going to go even bigger. Go big or go home. So I've prepared a piece that this is using the um, eight O's and obviously our finished piece is using the 11 O's. So when you've got to your length, you'll have all this lovely netting and you can choose colours that blend in that are the same colour as your accent beads or you can use colours that stand out. So I deliberately used a crossover bead so that I could kind of see that turquoise through because I thought it was really pretty. But if you don't want to see that, using neutral beads like silver or golds are really, really pretty. So this is the real size of beads, which we will go to in a minute, but I'm using the larger beads so that you can see what I'm doing. So when it comes to the embellishment, I've gone even bigger even bigger. So let me move this out of the way or else we'll be getting that caught. So this is just a large version of the netting and I've only done a couple of rows. So this is what exactly what we've just been doing and I just wanted to show you how you add your embellishments to the middle. So what you when you finished your netting on your last row you need to Take your thread so that you're coming out of one of these crossover beads at the bottom of your unit. So by unit, I mean this little triangular section here, that's a unit. So I've threaded my thread so that it's coming out through that bottom, ready to go into the top bead, crossover bead of the unit. So there again, we're using crossover beads. So this is making it so much more simple to actually see where we need to be going, especially at first. So with your actual bracelet, you're going to use, and I will go after this to the actual size so that you can see it in the actual size, but you're going to use a 15-0, your accent four millimeter bead, whatever that may be, and a 15-0. Now, because these are so large, I've used larger beads, but you'll get the idea. So what you need to do is make sure that your collection of beads fits comfortably 
in that little space. So you're not necessarily going to push it down, it's going to sort of sit half in there. So you might think, oh, I don't need those seed beads, like I'm just going to put a bead in on its own, that's absolutely fine. You don't have to have the seed beads, um, but this just fits really nicely. So my thread is coming out of the bottom, I'm just going to go across the diamond and work up through the next one so that my needle is going up and what you'll find as you pull is that that's so satisfying that bit you know I could just sit and do that for ages it's so satisfying you just pull it up through and then these little beads as if by magic just go into place so I'm going to grab some more of these and we'll go through doing the netting adding these larger beads so that you can really see um, how I'm doing it. So let me have a look, what size do I need these? So let's add these. So imagine that this is your four millimeter and these are your 15 O's. I'm gonna move it over a little bit. So I've come out of this bead here in my netting, the bottom bead in the unit, and I'm going to go up through the next bead at the top of the unit. So I'm going to add my smaller bead, my larger bead, and my smaller bead. So that's what I have on my needle. And then I'm going to go up, directly up the bead that's directly above the one that I'm coming out of and give it a pull. So as you get going, just make sure that you're not getting your thread caught on any of the other beads because then when you come to the end, you'll think, oh no, that one's sticking out. So just make sure when you get to the end of the row that you're checking the back and the front just to make sure that your beads are snuggled in there. So I'm gonna do the same again. I'm taking the smaller bead, the larger bead, and the smaller bead. I'm coming out of the bottom of this crossover bead and I'm going to go up through the top of this crossover bead here so that I'm always working in the same direction and it's really simple nice and repetitive nice and relaxing and you end up with something so beautiful now if you use a lot of tension on here if you really pull it you'll find that your bracelet starts to sort of curve and ruck up and if you want to you keep doing that you'll find that your bracelet turns into sort of a cup shape and it can becomes more of a cuff than a flat shape now that is um, an option you can do that so if you have a look on the finished one I did it on purpose where I really pulled tight on that first bit so if I'd have carried on doing that it would have just carried on curving and curving and then it would have just been like that, it was just sat like that because you've given it that tension. Whereas when I release the tension, it went flat. So it depends if you want to have a sort of flat bracelet like this, or whether you want to have sort of a curved, sort of a bit more like a bangle effect. And that's all just down to the tension. But you really do need to just add the tension and whatever tension you're adding, keep it the same so that all the bracelets flat or all the bracelet is curved. So once again, I'm going to add a smaller bead, a larger bead, a smaller bead. Now, when we come to the end of a row, we do something slightly different. We can't go up through this top bead because it's sideways. So instead, we're just going to go sideways through this bead. Hold on, I'm losing my thread. Just let me grab that thread out, there we go. So I'm gonna go sideways through that bead and that will nearly be popped into your little unit, but it will when you go down the next two beads and then out the next one. So that you've gone through and you're ready to begin your next row. And you'll find that as you pull that, that top one just goes into place. Now I don't like working towards me, so I'm gonna turn again and we'll do another row and then we'll move on with the technique so we're going smaller bead larger bead i think i've chosen the smallest the shortest needle in history to put on these large beads they're teeny okay and then we're going to drop that down 
So we're going back the other way in a row, we're going to continue working in that direction and pulling. Another thing to make sure is that you don't get your tail caught. Okay, and give that a pull. Now you're just going to continue going up and down, up and down your rows until you have your bracelet the length that you want it. Now if we're looking at comparisons here, this is the actual size. So you can see how that probably would have been a bit difficult to see if I'd have done it on the actual size, which is why I use these big huge beads so that you can get a really good indication of the thread path and where we're going with the beads. So I'm now gonna move all of these larger ones and we're gonna work on the actual size. So the actual size that made this bracelet. Okay, so just bear with me. So I've already, I'm going to do a baby bracelet. So we've done a little bit of our um, netting, but you would want to go the whole way, the whole length of the bracelet. Um, so just sort of either measure it on your arm as you go or measure it with a ruler as you go. So what I'm going to need for this are my size 15s. And my size 15s are so teeny. And that's why I've used a really, really prominent colour so that Hopefully you can see them, look, you can't miss those, can you? And then some of these are little four millimeter um, faux pearls, but you can use, as I said before, any four millimeter bead that you desire. So um, this is a four millimeter bicone. So if you want something really blingy, this is a fire polish. So that gives a different effect, same netting, but obviously one's a bicone, one's a round. It doesn't matter too much. You can use rondelles as well, or you can choose to leave your netting open and just embellish some of it. So once you learn the netting technique, um, it's really, really useful. So I've been filling um, my little gaps with my beads and the, the correct combination of beads is actually um, a 15-0, these teeny tiny specks, um, a four millimeter, in this case I've used a pearl, and a 15-0 and I'm using exactly the same technique to go up through the next crossover bead in my row but as you can see here on this really tiny sample it's quite hard to see what I'm doing. I'm going to get rid of that plaster. Right, there we go. So we're going to go 15 crossover bead, uh, not crossover bead, I'm so used to saying crossover bead, um, four millimeter bead. I'll be going to sleep saying 15 crossover bead. Even when it's not a crossover bead, it's a pearl and 15 And then we're going up through this one. So I'm going to actually just finish this row off and then we'll look at how to attach the clasp. And then if we've got any time left, I'm gonna go through some uh, hints and, and tips, which we don't often get time to do when we're doing the demo in the studio. So I've got my 15-0, my four millimeter and my 15-0, which is the real size that you'll be doing if you want one this size. So we've actually got to the top here and we know we can't go up through that top bead as we saw in the bigger version because it's sideways. So we're going to go down that bead and pull it sideways so that your needle's going that way on the end of the row. And give it a pull and then so that we can get down to the next row I'm going to work down just following the thread path of the next two netting beads and out through my crossover bead. Now don't worry if you can't get your needle through the beads that you need to get through in one go, it doesn't matter. You just get through them any way uh, that you can. Now let's talk about sewing in ends. So we will say and sew in your ends, but we never really get time to show you how to sew ends in. So let's sew in some ends. So imagine that's the full length and I finished my bracelet. Then I need to, to sew in my ends. So all we mean by that <laughs> Adam says he needs to sew in his ends. Well, Adam, I'm going to show you how. So what you do is you just follow your thread path 
until you get to a, any bead and you're actually going to go underneath the thread that's already there so you're catching it with your needle so I've caught the thread underneath with my needle and I'm going to pull through and you'll make a loop with your thread and then all I'm going to do is go through that loop and actually make a knot and then I'm just going to carry on weaving through my work till I get it's quite good if you go up and across and down and all different places and then I'm going to catch that thread again bring my needle underneath make sure you've caught the thread and then you'll have that loop and then you just take your thread through the loop and make sure that that thread just sits in between the beads sometimes the thread likes to catch a bead so you just need to unpick it if it does that and then you go through so you would do that as many times as you want really I usually do it about three or four times till I feel totally secure and then you can either use your thread burner or you can use your um, scissors and just nip that off so let's have a look at how to add the clasp so I would make my whole bracelet and finish it first before I add my clasp and add a new thread simply because if for any reason your clasp comes off your bracelet won't come apart because your bracelet's all secure before you've even added the clasp so what you need to do first of all is have a look and because we if I put it this way it's probably easier to see you can see that we've got this undulation with the beads because we use the extra beads for the turn and this means that we can sit really snugly in there with our little loops of our clasp so what I'm actually going to do is not add any beads at all I'm just going to go through through the clasp and continue going down till I get to the next loop of the clasp go through the clasp and keep going down so if I get the uh, larger piece this might make it a little bit easier so what you're going to do is put your loop into the little gap wherever that may be and you're going to bring your thread through and when you get to the loop you're going to bring your thread through the loop and then just continue your thread path down so it won't fit into that one obviously because that's too big so what I'm going to do is start off by adding some thread so you will have a new length of thread and your needle and then what I tend to do is I start a couple of rows back using exactly that same technique of knotting as I go so you can put a stopper bead on here as well if you think you're going to pull the thread through sometimes I just hold it with my finger and then I'm going to catch that thread underneath just like I did when I was sewing in my ends and then once you've got that thread tie a knot and give it a pull so you're adding thread and then going through and tying a knot and you're just basically tying maybe two or three knots until you think that your thread is securely in there now usually I'd have my head right over the top of this so that I can see exactly what I'm doing and make sure that you don't get your tail caught so just keep that out of the way we'll sew that in later and you'll know when your threads securely in because when you give it a tug your tail won't pull at all because you're secure so now all I need to do is start to move my thread through my beads and it you don't have to go through any special way you just want to make sure that you get your thread to where you want it to be so I'm exiting the corner here of my bracelet and I just want to pop my clasp back in there just to see where I'm going to put it so I'm actually going to add that first loop after that crossover bead so I'm going to go forward until I get to my crossover bead and then I'm going to go 
through the loop of my clasp and it'll be more it'll be simpler when you've started to to add that because you'll be able to see where you're going and before I sew down I'm just going to make sure I'm happy with the position yep and then I'm just going to continue sewing through my thread path so down through the next two beads which are my netting beads following following that thread path and just make sure that your clasp is sitting the way you want it to I know it sounds obvious but when you add the other end which you'll do in exactly the same way make sure that both because this has got an embellishment on it make sure that both of the little sparkly crystals are facing out um, or the other way but you haven't got sort of odd ones so that I'm going to follow my thread path again I'm having a look on my netting to see where the next loop is going to go and it's going to go again just to the side of a crossover bead so I'm going to just work my way up through my netting until I get to the bead that I want and I'm going to go up through the second hole of my clasp this clasp is so pretty and it's lovely to have the clasp sort of added in more than one anchor point because when you've got a thicker bracelet um, you tend to find that sometimes if you just add a clasp to the middle when you're wearing it the corners flap around whereas when you've got a fatter clasp your bracelet will sit how you want it to nicely on your wrist so I'm going to just continue down the next few beads and it's just exactly as it's been sewn through before I'm going to turn it over so that you can see actually that might be easier so as you can see there I've gone through and then I'm just going to continue my thread path because I need to attach my last loop so I'm going through the next two netting beads and the next crossover bead and if you can't get through the beads that you really want to you can do one bead at a time as I said before make sure that you're not catching anything in that thread that's just kind of the little tricky part of this point so that that's two now anchored on just checking where I want the third one to be and so I just need to advance my needle up through my netting beads and out through my last crossover bead so I've done my two netting beads I'm going out through my last crossover bead and then this is my last loop and I'm going through that in the same direction and pulling it tight because you don't really want to see any thread so you're sort of just slotting that in between there and then I'm going to continue just down my row now if I was doing this I would at home I obviously am doing this <laughs> if I was doing this but this is my body double but you know what I mean if I was at home I would do another pass through that so I would then probably tie a half hitch knot through here and go back the other way following my thread path just so I've got that extra security of having two lots of the thread through and then I would just simply like I showed you before sew through the beads and then just tie off or burn off my thread so that you don't see any thread protruding now remember as well that where you've added thread so like where we added thread here you're going to have some tails so you want these tails to be long enough to sew in so I would then take my needle off of this end pop it on here and then sew that in as well so you do that for the whole length of your bracelet till all of your spare ends are tied in and burnt off or cut off so that you um, have a lovely neat bracelet and that is literally all there is to it so it just depends on what beads you use as to what end result you get so if I show you again with the little four mil pearls we got that effect which was 
the calendar the calendar one okay and then this is with some check fire polish and then this blingy person <laughs> is with some um, bicones so these are all four millimeter and then this one which I did not too long ago actually is just the netting and I just added some of the lucite flowers actually onto the netting there so that's as simple as it is so it's just quite repetitive I hope you could see really clearly by using the larger beads um, on how to actually it's yours it's all about your thread path it's whether you go up the bead or down the bead and all of that sort of thing but practice makes perfect and for someone who said she'd never work with seed beads um, I'm, I'm pretty addicted so if you're watching live I'm going to be back with you in the new year so I will really want to wish you a Merry Christmas peaceful new year thank you for all of your support through the years and your lovely comments on social media i really really appreciate it alison's in tomorrow so don't forget to stay tuned for alison's demo and show and i will see you again very very soon take care